Hello and welcome to the mushroom. Not to be confused with the mushroom, it's just a room full of mush. I am Blue Toad, and I want to talk about social media platforms. That was that was the best I could do. do, do, do I don't know. <laughs> it's all downhill from here. Anyway, I mean, I use uh, social media a fair bit, so I should probably say something. Obviously, I make many, many, many videos on YouTube, and probably too many for my own health. I need to dial it down a bit. But for the moment, I want to focus by starting on Twitch. Twitch makes good decisions sometimes. I like how streaming focused they are, even if the discoverability is non-existent. I mean, it's kind of there, but kind of not there. It's, it's, it's a difficult thing. It's, it's, it's there because of the users on it at the moment. That's the only discoverability there is, is the people using the platform, not the people making the platform. Because, because basically, the community is making the platform. I, I really like when a platform focuses on what they do best. And Twitch does exactly that. It's somewhat easy to navigate. The only thing I think it needs to add right now is a favorites tab. So the streamers you watch the most are at the top of the list. As much as I want to support everybody I follow, it's just a little unrealistic. Life is just busy. <laughs> and continues to get more so. But follows are free and they make people happy. So go follow more people. But when you do have time, having a list of people who you want to support the most at the top of your following list, that would be helpful. So I'm moving on from Twitch. I'm going to use Twitch as a baseline a little bit here. Not not that much, but it's kind of kind of the in like it's a good middle ground of social media right now, I'd say. It knows what it wants to be and it does does it mostly well. So next I want to talk about the constant fire of Twitter. It gets a bad bad rep more than often. Uh, and more often than I've personally experienced, but a lot of it comes down to how you use it. And I don't have many followers, which makes it easier for me to not have haters, in quotes, replying to all my stuff. But the key word in that is replying, because 9.9 9 .9 times out of 10 you find haters in reply sections, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't go there. Just don't, don't, don't read through replies on other people's stuff, probably. Although it depends on how big they are, probably. So, um, unless of course you get notifications for them, but in that case, you could probably just ignore them. I would. I don't personally know how bad it is or how bad it might get, but yeah. From my experience, though, this is, and this is my, this, this is my advice for navigating Twitter is follow good people and you see good people in your feed. And it might take a while to get it to where you want. I really don't know if there's some sort of algorithm that shows stuff from people you don't follow. I, but yeah, it's always been pretty good for me. I always have, peop the, I, I always have the people I follow whenever, whenever, whatever they say, like, or retweet in my feed. So it's just always them, the stuff that they follow, basically. Sometimes, not all of the stuff that they follow, but yeah. I've never had a random saying rude things in my feed, basically. The thing you'll probably see on Twitter is people just posting their opinions, though. Regardless of who sees it. People just vent on Twitter, and I don't know why. It's usually fine, but something about the way it's designed, having only text for the most part, sends a different vibe than a real human conversation. It's weird. But I hope that's something that... Uh... I hope that's something that will be smoothed out eventually. So Twitter is not as bad as people say. It's not incredible, but to me it's like a virtual newspaper of the people I follow, and that's why that's what I enjoy about it. It's a good middleman and way to connect with your favorite creators, or if you are a creator, the fo your followers. Letting them know what you're up to, doing normal things like hanging out, uh, just having a holiday. Or letting people know when you're live or posting a video. Whatever you want, really. Also, uh, even since Elon Musk bought Twitter, it's still been alright. It's had a few problems pop up. Like, it just, it's just had a few bumps. But it's still Twitter. And hopefully it won't change that much, since it's mostly fine, depending on how you people use it. So, so enough about Twitter. Let's talk about the other one. The well-known one, but nobody knows why. The big F. Facebook itself. It's probably because I don't haven't used it much, but it's it's not great. You could use it similarly to Twitter, but I, the feel is very different. It's it's used more for friends and family sharing stuff, but it's weird that it's just on display for everyone. 
It's also very much not intuitive. I mean, it's simple enough, but you have to, you, just, you look at it at a glance and realize, oh yeah, you don't care. Not all the time, but most of the time. It also depends probably on the person using it and all that. But a lot of a lot of it will come down to how much your friends and family use it. But I think there are better places for that sort of interaction, like real life. <laughs> we're, I mean, we're already running out of conversation topics. It could be good to save some of those for in person. But I get if you want to reach out to friends or family further away, still no. Use something else. I'm going to uh, stop riffing on Facebook before I get cancelled. Just, just stating my feelings. I use I used Twitter, remember? Yeah, I riff on that too. Anyway, cancelled again. Dang it. Anyway, onto a platform that shouldn't be used as well as uh, as a way to communicate at all. Steam. Its chat is so meh. It just, it just, ah, oh, its calls are just plain whack. And no, that's not. <laughs> yeah, just, just no. That's all I want to say about the Steam chat, basically. And Steam just as a way to communicate in general. It's it's weird. Thank you for coming to my TED talk on uh, Steam Chat. Anyway, onto something you should use instead, and this one's a good one. Discord is not a good thing. I mean, it is a good thing, but I had to do the quote because I've heard that so many times. <laughs> Discord, this is one of my one I can appreciate fully. It knows what it wants to be and does it well. As I said, we we take those. Uh, Skype was a thing for a bit, but Discord is just better than probably any voice, video, or t and text platform. It's, it, yeah. It's good for one-on-one -on -one conversations, and dis its Discord servers are so good and helpful. Uh, depends on what server you, it is, the server is, and the community in it. But if you want to interact with your community or someone else's, it's very good for that. And it's good for friend groups, having specific text channels for different topics. You can use it for anything, within reason. Not saying that in a bad way, but there is, there's still people who use it for bad reasons. I mean, there are people who use everything for bad reasons. Something I have done with Discord, though, is I've made a server just with just me in it. Specifically for taking notes, for saving files, if I need them. And then I can access the server on my phone or computer and just have it whenever I need it. It's, I would, it's, it's so good and I would highly recommend doing this. And if I'm not mistaken, Discord was originally made for gamers by gamers, I'm pretty sure. And I like that because it knew what it wanted to be and has grown on its own without being forced. And it's, it's just been beautiful to see it grow over the years from uh, a better way to play games online with your friends to full communities doing what they love, sharing what they do, connecting. It's just really good. Anyway, I also want to talk about TikTok because life wouldn't be the same without it. TikTok started out a little rough, and it still is sometimes, but its algorithm is really good. It's incredible. Best one I've ha ever had the pleasure to use. Some people worried that if they follow people or stuff like, 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 stuff like that, it will ruin it. Uh, but it, makes, it takes what you enjoy and keeps on giving you more enjoyable stuff. It gives you what you like and multiplies it. It doesn't do it all the time, but you, you have to just it, it scroll and you'll find what you like and it'll, it'll give you more of that. It does take a bit to develop your algorithm on a new account, but the more you go through, the better it gets. The more it knows what you enjoy. You just have to know it's not all for you. So if you don't like it, skip over it and it will remember that. If you keep giving, if it keeps giving you stuff you don't enjoy, you might need to specifically search for something that you know you enjoy and give it something to start with. It's pretty good though. I, the things I found with it is it's good for keeping up with memes and news. Its discoverability is good. Like it's, it's really good because you're just scrolling through your you, for you page and you just find new stuff. It's probably one of the best ways as well that I've just, it's just one of the best ways to learn as well. There's just, there's just so much on TikTok. You'll learn things you might never have learned anywhere else. It's really good. I've had some rough patches with um, people's... No, it's had some rough patches, not me. It's had some rough patches with people's concerns. And it can, it, it can be a big time sink if you get distracted by it too much. 
Um, I've had many afternoons go by before I even know it, but it's it's always been worth it in my opinion. I want to give a quick moment for Vine, the OG short form content platform. It was so short, but the people used it so well. TikTok has definitely filled the whole Vine left behind, and that's a good thing. Now, let's take this down a few notches. I'm definitely going to get cancelled considering where this is, but I want to shift the light and the mood focusing on YouTube. YouTube is kind of meh. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, it's great for videos, but I, I want to take points away for it trying to be everything that it's not. It tries to be Twitch, it tries to be TikTok. It's all right with those, but I prefer it when, when a platform focuses on one thing being the best that it is. And it does video content really well. Discoverability is all right, and its layout is probably unbeatable. So in my opinion, it, it, it's probably 50-50. I'm divided on whether to say good job or not. It's probably a good tie-in to other platforms as well. So if you watch someone you enjoy on like YouTube Shorts, you might also look them up on TikTok. I don't know if I can tie it into Twitch though, but Twitch is just better for streaming in, in my opinion. Twitch it has worse discoverability, so I'd say if, you, if you're a creator, it's probably worth streaming on YouTube sometimes. I mean, you can, you can get a new audience, basically, by streaming on YouTube as well. So, you can bring the two together and figure out where you want to go. YouTube is a good platform, but it feels a bit all over the place and a bit overwhelming at times. Uh, there's definitely more social media platforms, but that's all I want to talk about for this. This, is, this has not been extremely long, but this is, this is what I wrote, and this is all I can really come up with. They're the ones I've had, so they're the ones I can have my opinion on. I can't have an opinion on stuff that I don't have. Before I finish, I had something else I wanted to talk about, but I forgot what it was, so I'm just going to say something about Nintendo Switch Online instead. So, the Nintendo Switch Online Plus, which is the expansion of the regular one, it doesn't feel quite worth it yet. It feels like you need more of something to make it worthwhile, which could be to give access to online games without having to own it, like Splatoon or Mario Kart and stuff like that. That being able to play those without having to have the a, a physical or digital copy of the game if you have the expansion. But why stop there? What if Nintendo Switch Online expansion was like Game Pass and you could get access to any game on the eShop? Even just what Nintendo decides are games you can play if you have N N NSO Plus, it would be better than what it is now. The more I think about it, the more I wonder why it's not already like this. Unless I'm just mistaken, and it is, but I don't think it is. I haven't seen anything telling me that it is. But it's already, it already keeps track of whether or not you have it and can limit what you do at certain in certain things. Um, and they've done some, they've done game trials for people who have regular NSO and up. So giving that much to NSO plus just makes sense. It would make, it would be so much more worth it. People already cheat their way to this kind of outcome anyway. So it'd be in Nintendo's best interest to do it. And they'd probably bring in a lot more NSO Plus subscribers. Not immediately, but over time it's just going to increase. Unless they do something stupid, of course. There's always that. The community always has the option to rebel. Just look at D&D. &D. Anyway, social media, good and bad. Hopefully better. And better NSO Plus. This has been a little bit short. So, it's fine. But this has been good. And this has been bad. This has been a mush of the two. So thank you for listening, and I post daily videos on YouTube, hopefully. I'm getting a little bit overwhelmed with trying to keep up with that at the moment. Uh, but yeah, so follow me if you want, and I'll see you all next time.